Well, the the rabbit, rabbit hole goes deeper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's the, uh, the hardest part on a big project like this is knowing when to call it quits, knowing when to stop. Yep. We're not quite there yet. We're not there yet. <laughs> nope, we got too much new material going down right here to ignore a little thing like this. So these stringers for the shaft alley are coming out and they're going to be replaced with some nice foam laminate. So we kind of mold this over some today. Uh, we tore out the last of the foam on this side, it's similar to this. Got down kind of the, to the turn of the bilge, or at least where it starts. And um, it looks good on that side, but, but this laminate is very thin. This is just, uh, what do we got here? We got a layer of roving and a layer of mat. Chop strand by the looks of it, huh? Yeah, that's, that's it. it. It's like less than eight. Yep, so as you can see, it's delaminated everywhere. Um, we've got shaft alley covers that are coming down on top of this that are going to be brand new. We've got sumps that are going in that are brand new. And we're thinking if we attach all that stuff to rotten wood like this, you know, well, what's that accomplish at the end of the day? Um, not a whole lot. I mean, geez, that's, uh, that's getting pretty well through there. Yep, pretty punky. <laughs> pretty punky, so, yeah. yep. So, this is the time to do it. Um, otherwise, we're just going to be thinking about this forever, and we'll regret it, I know that. Yeah, At some we'll point, be, we will be replacing all the foam, all the fiberglass in here, but it's going to be hard to come back in here and do that then. Uh, like I say, we're going to have brand new shaft alley covers, we're going to have brand new sumps going in, all that stuff would have to be removed to replace these, and it just doesn't make any sense to to damage those, trying to remove them, and and be able to reuse them. Yeah, try It'll not be a lot to more work. try not ruining them. It takes a lot of time when you're yep. actually removing something to save, yeah. versus just destructive removal. So, and I mean, right now we have the shaft out of here, so access is easy. Uh, that shaft would have to be pulled back out again in order to get in here and jackhammer this concrete away because this stuff is going to have to get knocked out of here mm -hmm. to get down to it. So Matt just uh, punched a little test hole right here. Um, it's not too bad. That's the turn of the bilge right there. That's, that's fiberglass. So we'll have to probably take four or five inches of concrete out of the center of this. Uh, when we're done, we'll just put it back in. Yeah. And uh, we'll have a nice even surface when we're done. We might even uh, just put a, a four or five layers of fiberglass over the top of it when we're done too, and we'll just have a nice fiberglass shaft alley. Most mm -hmm. likely we will. Yeah, any um, water coming from the shaft log back there, the, the bearing won't, won't intrude into them or into the concrete. Yeah, this concrete will just in. be encapsulated and sealed off from everything else and we won't have any issues going forward, so. so yeah, yeah, we're so doing, doing more work now to save ourselves more work later. I think that's the important thing right there. Yeah, don't want to waste time later on, just like. Time and materials. Yeah. We already know what we want to do as far as these shaft alley covers go. They're going to need some reinforcements here and there. Um, we will be replacing these bearing blocks at the same time, so those would need to be refastened into this old stuff. It just doesn't make sense, mm -hmm. really. It's like rebuilding a house on a rotten foundation. Yeah, exactly. It's you know, it's just it doesn't make any sense. So yeah, with this we'll have, we're at. Uh, we'll have um, nice new bones. These stringers don't run the length of the boat. They end at this bulkhead here. Yeah. Yep. And right there. And so. same thing aft, they also ended this aft bulkhead. So yeah, um, we got the rest of this concrete knocked out. Well, down to that point, that's where we, we were going to stop. Um, going forward here, this, or actually going back here, uh, this is where the foam was. It was like around here. Um, we pulled that out, and yeah, it 
is what we expected. Yeah. Um, so you can see right here where the stringer is tabbed into the hull. It runs up to right roughly in here. The laminate looks pretty good. There's a couple of spots that might be starting to fail anyways. But uh, there'll be enough room in here to come in here, strip this out, get it cleaned up to good glass, and then we'll come back in and we'll laminate our new uh, our new stringers in. So I think we'll just probably be taking two layers of that. Um, I don't think we're going to do three layers, but two layers will be enough. Mm -hmm. There'll be a, a heavy, we'll probably put a heavy web of, of glass in the middle of it. So we'll have like three layers of glass, one on each side and then a heavy one in between the two layers of foam. It's going to make it a very, very rigid um, structure that way. It's going to have, a, it'll have a lot of compressive strength this way and it shouldn't be an issue. We're going to pull some measurements um, off some known points that, that won't be moved. Uh, for instance, like the two bulkheads, we'll put a mark there and we'll get some measurements. And when we cut this, we'll do the same thing here. We'll put a couple of lines and get a good measurement. And we'll cut it and we'll just see how it reacts when we do it. If it starts to squeeze shut, we know that there's some compression there. If it opens up, we know there's some tension there and we'll deal with it accordingly. Mm -hmm. If it seems too severe, then we'll stop, we'll reassess, we'll get some planks in here, we'll bolt them into the existing stuff and we'll figure out what to do. Big relief to have it done when we move on to projects later. Yep. Not having to tear it out and redo it. Yep. But there is substantial rot in here. There's places where you can plunge this knife halfway in. There's the marks right there. Yeah, that dug out Without a, a pit right here with very little effort, just with a yeah, so that's that's literally halfway through. So we think that there's probably two two layers in here of planes. Um, it's kind of it's always kind of hard to tell exactly how things are built, but uh, but yeah, this layer right here it's it's gone. You know that there's there's no strength right there, right? So <laughs> the next one behind it a little bit better, but one thing about rot is that once it's in there. It, it won't go away. It doesn't matter what you do. Yeah. Um, it's just a matter of time before it gets into the rest of it and does the same thing, and then you just have a big pile of mush in there. Yep. So let's just get into in case, it. we'll do some measurements, make some marks, yep. verify it. Yeah, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. So, bust that tape measure on. Yep. All right. And the marker. All looks same same, so yeah, no change whatsoever in any of those measurements. So 
we should be just fine here. 56 and a quarter. Nothing weird happened here. I didn't feel any binding with my saw. Sawdust is cut awful easy, to be honest with you. So that's not a good sign when wood cuts real easy like that. Pretty wet down the, towards the bottom. A lot of wetness in here, dampness in it. See it on the glove. So yeah, it looks good. See it move a little bit here. Say we're all right, so I'm gonna start busting out the center piece. We can take that completely out now because we still have our bearing block here and the shaft in it as a reference and also the engine forward, of course, we can string a line, get that hiked again when we're ready. Um, yeah, just start demoing these out. sure didn't so yeah so it looks like we got a couple of different layers here anyways this first one just popped right off so uh, maybe there's some fastenings along the line here and I just happened to go in between two of them uh, yeah, we'll, sure we'll find out leg bolts or something going in right yeah we'll find out as we uh, move along in this project but uh, if there had been any adhesive or any kind of glue bonding those two layers it has long since lost its um, holding capabilities. And so, and yeah, this is just absolute rot right there. So, no hard feelings. Yeah. Just uh, confirming our, our uh, suspicions and <laughs> our thoughts on it. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's good. Absolutely so. Yeah, I'm just going to whack this little piece out right here, um, get this out of the way. And meanwhile, Matt is going to start clobbering this concrete out of here, I guess. Yeah, knock the rest of this out, reveal that inner uh, tabbing, and then come out probably around in here and just hammer toward it. Taper it down to the hull, huh? Yep. Yeah, just need to get enough to get the tabbing. Cleared. Get on it. Sweet.
Rani, Rani in house. Rani. Thank you.
There it is. All right, onwards to the back hold here. What will be the back hold? Cutting in the sump for it. Yeah, so same thing here. We pretty much just gonna remove the same thickness uh, so we can get to the tabbing on this. Get it removed. The rest of this is gonna get chopped out just like we did up forward. Got all that pulled out. Got most of our mess cleaned up now. So uh, it's coming over roughly 12 and a half inches here. And get up here. And I fall on that, I guess. Eight and a half. Eight and a half. Yeah, so, um, when we come back in here with our new one, uh, this was actually had quite a bit of slant on the shaft alley cover right here. It was kind of, uh, it was slippery and kind of dangerous in a way. And so uh, because of the heights of the shaft right here, it's down so low, there's really no reason to, to leave this up this high. So we'll be uh, probably matching it right here, bringing it dropping it down like that and uh, just end up with a, with a flat cover across. I think we'll probably just match in these mm -hmm. more or less, maybe go a little bit lower, we'll see. Whatever we're comfortable with. There's probably a fair amount of foam right here. Maybe we can reduce it a little bit. Maybe it's not that big of a deal, but yeah, we'll be just making sure that we have clearance over this and also our coupling. And so, we'll be able to flatten this out a little bit, something like that. Front of this has got to come up a hair, but then the back can come down a little bit. So it'll probably be something like that, which should end up matching these pretty well. And then we'll just have a nice flat uh, spot back here. Mm -hmm. It look pretty good. Yeah. It'll work out nice. Yeah, it'll be nice. So this was a little bit unexpected, but not really unexpected. Happy to be getting it done. Yeah. This is really only like a full day on it now. Yeah, it's, it's going pretty fast. So, I guess we spent about three and a half, four hours on it yesterday. Mm -hmm. About the same so far today. So, we'll get the, this last piece busted out and then we can start getting this tabbing cleaned up. This looks like we thought is just one big old hunk of concrete going down in the keel here. A lot, of, a lot of structure there, a lot of rigidity, so.
You should weigh one of these bricks. It's heavy. One of these heavier ones. Yeah. It's probably three or four pounds. Yeah. If this is your first time joining us, um, again, this wet foam isn't a concern. You can kind of hop back a few videos to see our uh, deeper explanation on it. But um, this is all stuff that we'll be replacing in the future to keep it short. Um, so not a concern whatsoever. It's uh, fully expected by the way uh, certain areas around the shaft alley cover here look. They were all delaminated and, and protrusions in the deck. So um, yeah, no concerns whatsoever. Yep. It's all going to be replaced in the future. So like Matt said, we expected it. This is a pretty common problem in fishing vessels in general. Um, you know, at some point, this is just something that needs to be done. After a certain age, this foam starts to, to absorb water and depending on the job, the install and everything else, it, uh, it happens, so. Yep, just In the case of this time. vessel, it was uh, the, the deck join to the hole was compromised and so this water was finding its way in from there. We've sealed that up now, so this shouldn't be an ongoing problem. And uh, when we do come in here to refoam, all of that's gonna be redone too and beefed up. And so, yeah, we shouldn't have this problem again, at least not in our lifetime. So uh, yeah, wow, a lot of water was coming down from right there. You can see it, it's actually kind of like kind of eroded it almost, or maybe that was just a pocket, but you can see water has been coming down through there, mm -hmm. picking up some rust somewhere too. Yeah, it probably from the uh, last there, before we reglassed the deck joint, I could see water running down the inside of it. Mm -hmm. So, yep, that's what led us to suspect the deck joint. There's not a whole lot of places the water could, could have been coming from, so there's a, uh, that was our most obvious uh, culprit there. Yeah. Yeah, and we haven't had any more, any more issues with it uh, coming down the wall or anything where we have the foam cut away for this bulkhead. So we should be in pretty good shape there.
got it. That wasn't too bad, huh? Slid right out of there after you took the tabbing out? That one was easy because it was all loose on the bottom here. Like you said, it just peeled all the way off back here. Yeah. So it really was just cutting the skin and nipping the top off. And mm -hmm. Getting this corner loose and up. But yeah. Then I just you know, slid it right back. Actually, I lifted up on it first, but yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Nice chunk. It's like some pretty good rot right there. Stabbing tools. What do we got here? Ruler. Oh, that's gross. Oh, yeah. yeah Even up here, that looks okay, but it ain't. It wasn't the fiberglass that was delaminated, it was the, <laughs> the wood. <laughs> wood fiber. Yep. Well, cool. See you later. Well, that's one half done. Yeah, I don't think cleanup should be too bad. We'll get a pry bar underneath there. We'll see if this tabbing wants to lift off easy. If not, then we'll just probably do some cutting and some grinding. I reckon probably just chew it off of there. Well, if it does lift up easy, then that reaffirms that we made the right decision. Because yeah, it if it's up. anything like the deck joint, then yeah, that's a definite uh, relief. It's going good up here. Um, yeah, it looks good. Just the uh, same thing, boring holes, you go all the way forward. The pole up here is a lot less slanted compared to back there, so they like Oh, sure enough, it's yeah. leveling off, isn't it? It is. It, That's kind of weird because it almost looked like it was even more slanted. Yeah, I thought it was going to be uh, really deep up here, but no, it's, uh, it's a lot less deep, which is good. That weird what we thought might have been laminate like a bowl in here before it was just a bunch of resin on the inside of that strainer. No strength in resin. Gotta have glass in it. We got the stringer all cleaned off or stripped off the uh, old tabbing. That went pretty good. Um, Checked out the rest of the concrete, back four or five inches thereabouts for our future tabbing. And then we took some, um, some oven cleaner, some heavy duty oven cleaner, sprayed this whole area, degreased it. Still needs some uh, some more here and there, but um, got the heavy off anyway. So yeah, we'll so. get it scrubbed up good. It looks pretty good scrub. overall, but yeah. Anyway, it's uh it's good progress. It took us probably what like 20 man hours for this half. Like a full day. So not too bad. Yeah, maybe a little bit less. Yep. At least peeling off that tab is easy. Yeah, that would be good. <laughs>